had to give myself another tape measure. Lose my head if it wasn't screwed on. All right guys, in today's video, we're gonna be setting the new location for the B pillar, lengthening the door, and creating a structural web in here so we can fix that post in place, at least from the inside. The outside, to fill in these blanks, that's gonna come later. Welcome back to Envision Prototypes. I'm Nick, if you're new to our channel. Now, if you've been following along, in the last video, we took that roof, shortened it, and fixed it in the new location. We also took these curvatures and figured out the best place to mount them based on the new proportions of the car. On a standard two-door car, this area through here, this width, oh, check this out. One for each hand now. Good. So, as I was saying, we had to play around with this distance as to where it was going to look the best. If we went with the dimensions of a two-door, it would have put it over here, which would have made that too wide, and it wouldn't have worked with the proportions of the side of the car. This car has been shortened. We took eight inches out of here and 10 and three quarters out of there. So to use the proportions of a two-door car, it won't work anymore. And when it comes to the doors, if we went out and found two doors from a two-door 56 Windsor and used them instead of doing anything with these doors, they would have been about this long. And again, standing back, looking at it, it just didn't have the look I was after. The doors were far too long. So we're gonna take, as I mentioned, and just extend these doors. Create a section in here, get it installed with a new location. That door, we have to create a whole new door. Yeah, I can find a four door door, get it in and cut it and all that stuff, but these aren't too bad to fabricate to build. So we'll build a door for the other side. Put down in the comments if you can tell whether or not that roof's been lowered if you haven't seen the other videos. Just throw it down there. So once you get that post in, the web in, and the door lengthened, then basically we're gonna blow everything apart, take the rockers off, they're only on screws, disassemble everything, get in here, and create additional structures. It has to be a cab mount created, because these here are pretty much toast uh, to hold this area of the body to the chassis, and we have to create a support in underneath to hold that post from moving. The reason we have to create more structure in this area is we don't have a post to hold the top of this door post in place to the roof. So when you close the door, you don't want the side of the car moving in and out. You want it to be solid. So like I mentioned, once the rocker comes on, we'll work with the inner rocker, create additional structures, go in, pick it up on the frame and get that done. But we can't do any of that until I know exactly where that post is gonna sit. So let's get to work and see what we can do with this. It'd be cool if these were right hand, left hand. Then you can have like a double tape draw. Okay, getting back to this. I get easily distracted sometimes. Now to set this post in this new location, we're gonna measure from the front edge of the door, rear vert to 46 and a half. Drop down, make a line, which I've done already. We'll align that flange with that mark that we created and mount the post on a few screws plumb it up, make sure it all works. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Nick, didn't you just say a door or a pair of doors from a two door are 48 and a half and you want to create a 46 and a half inch door? That's only two inches difference, what's the big deal? Why don't you just save yourself a lot of work, get two doors from a two door hardtop, from a Windsor two door hardtop and use those? Well, I'll tell you. When you get back and you look at the proportions, the new distance between the back edge of the door and the axle and the, what's behind the wheels, the roof line, a two door door is just way too long. This area in here, ahead of the A pillar, it just adds so much more length to that door than you know what we're gonna be running with. So the sweet spot, after playing around with tape and markers and all that stuff, was 46 and a half inches. It looked good. And that's what we're gonna run with. 
And to create another door for the other side, it's not really that big of a deal. Yeah, it's a bit of work, but we don't have to create mounts for the quarter vents. We don't need the motor mounts. We don't need track mounts because we're gonna be running with aftermarket tracks. And we'll have a one piece glass pane that goes up and down inside to simplify the look of the side of the car. Uh, the hinge area, again, we have to make sure it's rigid, it's strong. We do have the hinges for the other side, so we have to make plates and all that stuff up in here for the other door, but again, that's not too bad. And this door will just add material in this area. This is original window stop, we'll retain that. And we'll create a new bottom of the door because, uh, well, things are kind of deteriorated there. Like they had drain holes, so I'm not quite sure why this went as badly as it did. So uh, they have a little vent here, not sure what that's about. But anyway, uh, we're gonna get one side roughed in, get that post located and get the web in. And then we're, I think we're gonna take and blow everything out, prime all the panels, reassemble it, and move on to the back of the car and get that located because this hasn't been welded yet. It's just, just sitting there. This is separate from the roof section. And then we'll go ahead and fill in more blanks as we, as we move forward. But today, let's focus on this. Okay, now it is leaning back a little bit. It's gonna sit more like that, just using the icrometer. Uh, we'll, we'll have to make sure that it works properly with the latch. For now, I'm gonna get a little shim, slide it in, and we'll bring the door shut and see how well this edge uh, lines up with the back edge of the door. And then we'll do some more cutting on the door. But you can see, we're only attached to the sheet metal and that's moving around, we can't have it moving. So, like I said, once we blow all this out, we'll create little triangular, triangular uh, I guess this one, ah, here we go. These little triangular reinforcements and they're gonna sit in under here to hold uh, the post from moving around. Okay, got myself a shim here. Just slide this in. Let's close the door. That's close. Okay, that's close. And we are at five and a half. And this is tapering down, we're losing material here. Because this post was an inner post uh, and the door skins came out here because it was a back door, we need to add a flange on here to tie in with the rear quarter panel. But that'll come later. Next step, let's get some cardboard out and create an inner web. This is what it's gonna look like, roughly, right there. We have to create a hole here to access the power window mechanism. Uh, this crease won't be here, that just happened to be in the cardboard. It's gonna sit down there. The back edge on the sheet metal will create a flange, tie into the tub. And at the front, we need to, we will spot weld, once we set the, pole, the uh, web in place, we'll spot weld to the post. We'll have an edge here for the seal to go on and the top needs to be bent up to match the door. The door has a specific configuration for the window uh, seals, for the window wipes. Let me get this on some clamps here. This tape can be removed. We have our line, I need a marker. So let's do something like that. And really that's fine there. We can use that crease as a alignment mark. So we'll cut through this door, lengthen it, latch it, and then we'll create a piece of sheet metal that'll basically fill in this area. You might be thinking, why didn't I go through here? It's less to join up. Well, I want to retain this window stop when the window comes down in this location, it'll be more or less centered with the glass. It won't tip the glass when the window comes down. Uh, not sure if we need it, but I'll leave that there. And we will have to, because of the nature of the mechanism, enlarge this hole a little bit bigger, create a flange, make it all pretty.
So there we have the back edge of the door. Just realize this mechanism is all seized up for the door handles. And it's actually broken. The pot metal, white metal, whatever that is, it's broken. So we will have to make a new mount. I'm not sure yet. We'll get to that later on. There. So that's locked in place. That's the new location for the back edge of the door. And there. It's going to sit somehow like that. So I'll get some sheet metal out, bend up a new piece, we'll tack it in place, get them aligned, and try swinging the door, see how it operates. I might even spray some lube into there and get that, get that freed up. I really wanted to keep the original handles because they look really cool. The door locks themselves the, for the key. We're gonna have poppers for that or actuators for that. Check this out. Just missed a track. We'll probably pull that out, save some weight. So this part here is pretty much redundant, but I'm not gonna cut it away just yet. Yeah, we're not using the quarter vent and all that stuff, but I need to know where the outside of the door is. So we're gonna leave that. This part here, this is for the Chrysler guys. Do you guys know what this extra little vent down here is for? It looks like a deflector or air allowance or something. Uh, it didn't help the bottom of the door, but I uh, wonder what that was about. In any case, we're gonna be cutting that away, get rid of this bracket here and we're going to join up a new bottom just above here uh, tie it into this area so we're just going to come down with our new piece of sheet metal the extension to here so that's three quarter one and then down to here it's 20 and a half say 24 and a quarter plus three quarter, it's 25, 26 inches long. And uh, we'll get that bent up to this configuration, get it installed, and then attach the back edge of the door. Just through a laser level up here, I wanna see how plumb my line is. I'm really close. Okay, that's fine. So what did I say, 26 inches? 24 and a quarter, plus three quarter, 25, and one, 26. Okay, let's do it. Right, so I have a remnant off of that last sheet that I cut up. It looks to be about the right length. Yeah, 29 and three quarter, perfect. Let us mark this, chop that off. We need five and a half 
because this is going to be a butt joint. So now we have our blank and we got to bend it up to fill in this gap. Now this brake has the ability to make very sharp bends or soft radius bends. And we want a soft bend with a bit of a radius. We're going to back this top bending edge rearward. That'll give us a softer edge. And I just got to figure out which way to go. Um, this might be in our way. We'll see. Go this way. It's 90. It's not bad. This, unfortunately, is in the way. Shoot. Let's see if we can get it in there. Yes, I can take it off. There. Good. We have our secondary bend. That's to return down. And we need to make one more. That's going to sit like that. We need to make our bend here. Yeah, that's close. We can use our finger brake to make some adjustments if we need to. Yeah. These are looking good. That will blend in. We can clamp this in place. Readjust here. Okay, that's coming in really close. We need to create a little bit of an offset here, which will pull this material up. Before I do that though, I'm gonna put a few tacks just to hold things in place because it's gonna keep sliding around if I don't. Aside from that, it's looking good. That's looking good there. And when we form up the new bottom of the door, we'll come right up into here and pick all this up. Okay, so we're progressing along quite well. Back of the door has been joined to the front. A little seam here, we have to finish welding that. The front one's just about there, a little finish work at the bottom. But we have to make a big decision, guys. Do we take this trough and continue it all the way up like that? Or do we make use of this little step here and terminate the front 
diagonal trough at that point. This is almost level here. Flatten that out, bring them together, weld it, and then just kind of fake in the back one. I think that's what we're going to do. There's no real reason why we have to continue it all the way up through there like that. Uh, this one here, that stops there. You know, it, this one here, it stops here and there. You know, we don't have to make continuous lines all the way through. I'm going to go ahead and weld that up, finalize it. But before we do that, we can give this a try and see if it closes. This is the inside of the door. Once we finish the bottom of the door, repair that, we're going to get these panels media blasted because we need to get rid of all this rust on the inside, you know, stuff that you never get to if the skin was on. So we'll get that done and then we'll put the skins on after we prime it, of course. There we are, we're just about latched. You see the post is moving. Ah, I just latched the door. There we go. Everything appears to be working even with the bottom of the door missing. See that, it's creating some flex there. Once we join that up, it'll take care of all that. Uh, let's see if I can open it one-handed here. Oh, look at that. Success, guys. Now that we have the door lengthened, we can go ahead and form up these rear pieces and get that post solidified. And I've been looking at this. We're gonna also create a diagonal brace down from the post. Doesn't have to go all the way up. And down here, down to this body mount. Uh, this is really strong in here. We're going to tie the two together in addition to reinforcing the underside with this stuff in here. Uh, I won't be reusing these. But I'll make up fresh ones and get them installed after the rocker's out. Get the rocker in, no post, weld through, pick up that diagonal little gusset and then bring the post in, weld the post in. You know, it's got to be done from the inside out. Uh, otherwise, you have to be working from this little tiny hole here all the way down through there, which is, I guess, technically impossible. So let me get this welded up, and then we'll get started on this inner web. So with the door extended, latching, unlatching, the latch is a little bit sticky so it's in the open position, we can now go ahead and get the inner web done. And here I've got some sheet metal that we've cut out, I haven't formed it yet. Uh, this is going to fit across the bottom, we have to roll the flange, punch some holes, roll the flange, punch some holes. This will tie into the wheel well, this is on a curve so we can't break that in the uh, brake, you have to do it by hand. You use a tipping wheel and then finish it off with a hammer and dolly. And we've got this larger piece, so we have to basically do the same thing too. I'm not going to create the hole just yet until we get it planted in the car. Roll that flange, nothing has to happen here. This top, we need to roll it over so we blow here. And it'll pick up the, uh, the window curve there, as well as the package straight at the back. So this, these two pieces are going to tie everything together and stop that from doing that. It's pretty straightforward. That one bend happening there. And the second bend happening here, but we can't roll it up until we take out some material because it's going to interfere with us rolling that flange up. Watch your eyes. Those things love to jump. I don't even know where that went to. All right. Let's roll this up. I've got a 
lower wheel with a bit of a V in it because we're dealing with 18 gauge. It helps the material run away a little bit to create that bend. Slipping through, so that's about it, all we can get on this. Oh, there. The other thing we have to take and stretch this flange a little bit. So kill two birds with one stone, roll it up, and use the hammer and dolly. Stretch that out using the dolly. See, it's flat because I've been kind of peening that top of the flange. So it leveled it out. You'll notice it more when you roll that one. That one turned it kind of into a banana when you roll it. So we'll have to stretch it out. Probably oh, using the kick shaker, the kick stretcher. And there we have our first piece. Uh, not much. Oh yeah, I forgot. We got to level this out. Okay. Got ahead of myself. No problem. That's a punch ready, but I need to do one thing with this first before we roll this up. So this has to be installed in such a way that after we salt the car, any moisture coming down the glass or gets past the glass will run down and shed won't get trapped and run inside the car. It'll run down and out and there'll be drain holes. So I need to create this little offset in such a way that it sheds. Do one of these. And Creating kind of a, a Z panel. There we have it. See, it comes up and over. So the next sheet's going to come in on this side, and your moisture comes down, runs out. Now we can roll that. This kind of helps break the material, and then I can just finish it off with a hammer and dolly. Gives me a start. So I'll just finish it off now. And now we can install it in the car. Okay, that's sitting quite well. A little bit out at the top, we'll roll that in. Not a problem. Driver's side rear, that way. Let's punch some holes. Hey, sorry guys, just realized the microphone wasn't plugged in. So hopefully that sounds a little better. We'll roll that over a little bit. I want to get this top sheet fitting in and then we'll make some final adjustments. Uh, we can leave that clamp, that's good. Now before we start on this top piece, let's go over here.
these fenders are just over five feet long and you can only do that for so long. I'm not building up any heat. Just very carefully stripping the primer that they put on as well as the epoxy primer, <clears throat> which really isn't too bad. A little bit of filler down here. I could just, I can see it. I applied the torch to it, kind of bubbled up. It's not very thick. So we're gonna take the, again the stripping disc and just remove it. And we're gonna systematically go over all these fenders, all the body panels, and just bring her down to bare metal on the exterior. Inside wise, they have that sound deadening on. It's stuck on really well. Wherever it's loose, it's, we're gonna take it off. But to media blast it or pop it off, it's gonna take forever. And if it's stuck on well, why disturb it? Exterior wise, we have to bring it down to fresh bare metal. Let's get back onto that inner web. First time through, we're just breaking the edge, creating a track. Now, when we roll this up, you're gonna see this panel develop quite a nasty curve and we can't have that so we're going to have to stretch it. Let's do this since we have it in the machine just run it backwards yeah my arms aren't long enough for that At this point, we can roll it up with a hammer and dolly. Now, we can't stick it in the car that. That's no good. So we're taking stretch it out using that, roll the top and then fit it to the car. Don't need much, just a little bit. There we go. Actually we have a little bit going the other way too much. So we'll take and hammer this out a little bit and it'll settle down. Now we're gonna take and roll this flange down until it meets that wheelhouse. Make sure it's tight. So when we weld it, we don't have any gaps or anything. It's a nice strong joint. Now for the top, I want a nice soft radius that matches what we have on the doors. Back this off again. Should be good right there. There we go. That's going to go out and then we'll create a new piece to pick up the uh, window wipe channel seal. All right, let's see how this looks. Okay, I have a bit of a gap. Will that stay? It's good. So I can stick my fingers in this space here, and that's not good. We obviously can't weld through that. And I'm looking up there, there's a bit of a space between the package tray and this panel at the top. So if we cut away five eighths of an inch using my micrometer, we can have this slide back and fit a little bit better. See the extra material here? We can't cut that away because we'll shortchange ourselves. We slide that back, tighten that up, that'll fit better up there. We also need to take and cut away the bottom portion of this curvature, this curved piece. 
This is going to stay here until we have this located and tacked or whatever, so I don't lose this location. That's a bit better. there. Okay, that's fine. When it comes back, we can cut away a little bit more and the top. I'll fit this 15 times if I need to until it fits perfectly. Cut away too much material. It's not a good thing. All right. We need to go back a little bit more. And we can roll this down a little bit more. just about there. That has to come down a little bit. clamp on that for now. I want to close the door. See how our level is sitting. It's a bit low in the back. We're on top of that flange. I have to make that adjustment. Lots of adjustments. Yes sir, look at that. So as you can see, it's turning out really well here at the top of the door. We need to make a little adjustment right here. We trim that off because I need this to sit on top. We'll roll that down a little bit, kind of work with the two. This is coming in nice and tight, but down here we have a space and that's because this flange, I need to roll that in to the wheelhouse. Everything else is working out the way it has to. Let's take this out. Fitting up quite well to here. Good. This can be trimmed away later. Looking good there. Oops, jumped out. Yeah, let's squeeze that over there with a the clamp. Should squeeze this with a clamp. It has to go up. Not 
long enough. Okay, let's pop that out. Like that. See if we can do this. So there is our offset. Let me see how well that fits. So any moisture is going to just run down. The leg comes up on the inside, about this high. We'll have our spot welds there and mosquito. And uh, that's it. So we got to get that top pinned. <laughs> Go away. It's not summer yet. good in here. I need to trim away a little bit of material and this is going to jump up on top. So let me cut away the material so it slides in and then we'll get this uh, channel sitting on top of that inner web. change in weather. Wind's picking up. Okay. I need the friendly persuader. If I put you guys inside the car, you're going to be shaking all over the place. You might fall out. Don't need a clamp. We need a screw. There we go. This is looking good. We've got these two panel sections installed. Uh, this isn't installed for the final time yet. We still have to punch holes for plug welds. Need to do some beadwork around there, create an access hole so we can get in for the window mechanism. I might throw some more beading into the bottom panel. It just looks better. It's pretty strong, it doesn't flop around, but uh, it just looks better. Uh, run some screws in through there and let's get an aerial view over here as to how this is all turning out. See this ties right into the package tray. This web here is all going to be joined up, welded, plug welded and that carries on into the door area, to the door post. So this is going to be very strong. And yeah, we have to make the sail panel structure on the inside as well as the outside. But we're not going to do that until I get the other side in, same as this side but opposite, and then we blow everything apart, take all these panels out, punch them, primer them, and get them in for the final time. This is the stage where we didn't bother attaching the fins, they're off to the side because we don't want to attach it now and find out that we should have moved it an eighth of an inch here or there because of something else that moved. Right now if we put all the screws back into the original holes everything should line up to where it is. Sometimes we're lucky and it's not. So we have to find out what moved, what moved where. Like the front cowl section, 
That's actually tacked to the chassis. And the back is bolted. I threw a bunch of washers in there because the bolts were long for the rubber grommets. They bolted to the back end. So nothing's gonna move. Technically, if we remove all this, uh, those two sections won't move. The roof is joining everything together. So that won't move. Right now, the main thing is, like I said, get that side done, blow everything apart, primer the panels from the underside, anywhere we can get to them once they're installed for the final time, and then start building the floor out from the center, creating additional supports in under the post. Now we know where they are and we can solidify them. Like that's still a little bit floppy, but heck, we're on screws. But we can't depend on just this sheet metal here. It could potentially break. We have to create a structure inside that supports the post. And we'll create one more gusset that goes in and picks up this floor cross member here up to the post. Not very high because we need to be able to you know, jump in through this space to get into the car on the passenger side. That's how we're gonna be designing this. The front passenger seat is gonna flip forward and you'll just jump in to the car from that side. All right, give me 251.8281 minutes and uh, I'll get that side installed and then we can take one more look at it before everything comes apart. Okay, that's done. So there we have it. Two door posts mounted, interwebs created, installed on screws, fixed to the tubs, solidifying the posts from moving forward or back, in and out, different story. It's not bad, you know, we're on screws. So it's a little bit of wiggle room there, but it's not too bad. And we can close the door and got our fingers crossed so we can close it. Yeah, there you go. Kind of awkward with one hand, but there we go. It's up on the rubber here. And we have some rubber down below. This latch needs some going over. I mentioned earlier we got to lubricate it. Things are just really, really sticky. And the fact that this isn't pivoting isn't helping matters much. But uh, yeah, we'll get that lubricated and fixed up. Open it up and see if it'll open. Eh, not bad. Can we see in there? Ah, so this post has to twist out a little bit. Like that, see? Little things. Ah, and it just shut. There we go. The outside skin is going to kind of help us with that as well. But we need to pick up the flange here to come out and pick up the quarter. But we won't do that until we roll up a skin for this door. It came out pretty good, extending it back like that. And as you can see, it wasn't necessary to have this channel connect. It just terminated here where, they are, where their bump was. And that was it. And this was pretty much flat here. Uh, that's pretty much it for this side. Passenger side. Can't really show you a door because we have no door, but we've got this post mounted, same way, and interweb installed. Uh, there is a space up there, I just saw it from over here. Uh, again, we'll have to undo that screw and lower it just a little bit. Next step is gonna be to blow all this out. I'll leave that door on there. Not gonna bother taking that off. Uh, we're not gonna prime that because it's gonna be media blasted later, but those webs, door posts, rockers, floors, all this is coming out so we can prime it. And just like that, we're back down to what we started with a few weeks ago, just a bunch of body sections mocked up on the chassis. Once it dries, we'll reassemble it and start welding for the final time, making sure all the panels fit, taking care of those little spaces the way they're supposed to be. It's been a long day. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, let us know in the comments. Hit the like button. Until next time, guys, take care.